As the coronavirus pandemic forced us indoors, for many of us, the best way to escape has been in books, music, films, and series. But ironically, even as ratings broke records around the world and here in SA, many of our local artists are barely getting by. People are depressed, people are anxious, people are broke, people don't know where their next meals are going to come from. With a curtain down for the foreseeable future, the art sector is on life support. More specifically, this life support. We've redirected 150 million rands to provide the much needed relief to practitioners in the sector. This was later increased, but how do we support an entire sector for about the price of one hinkandla? Something just doesn't add up. And even we humanities graduates can tell you that much. Let's get our way. Imagine your lockdown without these two. Or these guys. Or without this jam. <laughs> or this one. When people zone, they put saliva on the paper and then zone. And then they share. Let's face it, Mzanzi. Without our talented artists and the creative industry that supports them, this lockdown would have been a whole lot worse. Well, it could be worse than that. So it's not surprising then that Showmax saw a 50% increase in viewership, Multi Choice's daytime audiences grew by 100%, and SABC's most watched TV program, Ozalo, had a record breaking 11.4 million viewers tune in for an episode in April. Oh. Hey, man. This doesn't even include the countless books read, YouTube videos, and live stream performances we binged our way through. But beyond just keeping us entertained during lockdown, the arts are in fact a vital part of how we make sense of our societies and ourselves. Who better to explain all this than iconic actress, writer, and poet Lebo Mashile? Why should we care about art when people's basic needs aren't being met? Art is fundamental to how we understand our humanity. And in a country like South Africa that is reeling from all kinds of intersecting historical, political uh, traumas, art then becomes a fundamental tool to help us to address those traumas, to heal from those traumas, and to go forward. There are questions that artists and art asks that cannot be answered by anybody else. And this is critical thinking that we need to cultivate in our society. So. So it's and I mean I'm glad you asked the question because how do you mobilize a society to care about something when they don't understand the value of it? And it turns out that South Africa's cultural and creative industries don't just act as a sort of national therapist. They are also, of course, a huge source of soft power. <laughs> We have some of the world's most incredible artists and performers putting Brand South Africa on the global map. We're all the way from uh, Limpopo in South Africa. Oh, you're from South Africa? Wow! South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. But perhaps most importantly, they also contribute a whopping 74 billion rand of real economic value to our GDP. It's a fast growing sector that supports over 1 million people, or about 7% of all jobs in SA. Or at least it did before this happened. A nationwide lockdown. Cinemas and theaters to be aligned to limitations on the gathering of people. The South African culture and creative industry is one of the sectors that will be hardest hit by the coronavirus. Its impact on the cultural and creative sectors has left them desperate. Many of them are battling to put food on the table due to the lockdown regulations. Museums and art galleries are closed. Fashion shows canceled. Production houses have been forced to shut. Live shows and other events have also been canceled. Award-winning actor and author Bukhle Ngabe told us she was hit really hard. COVID-19 definitely impacted my livelihood and my work in that I lost all of it for the rest of the year. There were several festivals that I was meant to go to, both literary festivals and theatre festivals and some films that I was supposed to begin shooting and all of my work was immediately cancelled, which was very intense. Musicians blocked the national road, breaking the law to make themselves heard. Artists say they have been neglected for far too long. 
we must also remember that um, the art cleaners, uh, the are also security guard, it has uh, not only impacted us as artists. 53 billion is the average reduction in the output of the sector for the whole year. Many people are in a very desperate space. The people that I'm speaking about are people who are breadwinners and now their sources of income have collapsed. So surely government has a plan, right? Uh, yes. Well, back in March, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture Minister Nati Mtetwa announced a 150 million rand relief fund, which was later increased to 200 million rand. So let me not screw this up. 200 million divided by 1 million jobs equals 200 rand each. Well, it's better than being paid an exposure, I guess. Exposure kills. Exposure kills. Compare this to the taxi industry's relief fund, which is 1 billion rand, or the government's latest commitment to fund South African Airways for 10 billion rand. On behalf of all of us at South African Airways. Thanks for the free money. In reality, the government capped the relief fund limit at 20,000 rand per applicant, meaning many people in the sector would just simply miss out entirely. And as for the process of applying and actually getting the funds, let's just say it made Frodo's journey through Mordor look like a walk in the park. Priority will be given to artists and creatives who were already booked, <laughs> as well as to the legends of the industry. <laughs> The process was incredibly intense. It's a lot of admin. It, no! it was a lot of printing of documents. Ah! When at the time we were still at level five, so we couldn't go and print anything. Ah! Tax clearances, ah! bank statements, ah! both the first wave and the second wave from a process point of view have been very, very dysfunctional. Ah! And some still not having been paid after more than a hundred days of lockdown. With the hashtag Nati and Tetua must fall trending earlier this year as well, clearly tweets aren't happy with the way he's dealt with the crisis. Even Bonang weighed in, agreeing with a Twitter user who wrote that the minister is annoying. Mm -hmm. It's deeply insulting to not have a minister who, or and, and to not have senior government officials who are practitioners in and of themselves. These people don't understand how we work. They don't understand what it is to be a freelancer. We will not stop till you respect as Mr. Natin It's time that this department started esteeming us the same way that we esteem ourselves and the global community esteems us. But the complaints against Ntetwa aren't the only sign that government is failing to prioritize the arts. The problem started way back when having corona meant you were probably chilling on a beach somewhere. Arts in South Africa continue to face uh, major hurdles. Institutions like the Gauteng Opera and Dance Umbrella recently shut down because of a lack of funding. After Ramaphosa's re-election in 2019, he slashed the number of government departments. We have combined a number of portfolios. Sports and recreation is combined with arts and culture. This was seen as a bad move by many arts practitioners who felt the arts would play second fiddle to sports as a result. Or at least they would if the fiddler doesn't get replaced by a rugby player. <laughs> Turns out, they might have a point. Meanwhile, this year's polished execution of the Oscars of South Africa, aka the South African Film and Television Awards, was another shining example of how seriously we take our artists. Guys, is there like seriously any reason why I'm wearing like a pillow and a duvet? President Ramaphosa also didn't mention the arts sector even once during his 2020 State of the Nation address, except by quoting lyrics by Ladysmith Black Mambazo's Joseph Shabalala. We face high mountains, must cross rough seas. We must make our place in history and live with dignity. But there was something weird about hearing the words being spoken by a billionaire when there is a recurring trope of artists dying broke in South Africa. Boy, that escalated quickly. What is this department? The Department of Condolences and Obituaries? What about the artists that are living? There have also been recent allegations of corruption involving Minister Ntetwa and the CEO of the National Arts Council. Meanwhile, the stories of corruption and mismanagement at the state-owned SABC go back years and have a direct effect on the industry. 
Now, the controversial former Chief Operations Officer of the SABC is widely blamed for the current financial crisis that the public broadcaster finds itself in. In South Africa, you have only one cloud, no one else. Well, clearly that was one too many. The artist sector is like the wild, wild west. It's one of the most unregulated sectors in the country. There's no law in that town. But there are systemic impediments that mm -hmm. make it very difficult to organize artists. It's true. I got offered a gig at the SABC a month ago for a third of what I was earning when I started out 15 years ago. Godless heathens. So we're on a constant treadmill of desperation. Rob a bank, kill somebody. And that makes it very difficult to get people to come together. So I'll talk about this like civilized folks. Sure, come on in. I suggest we all first lower our weapons. Another major challenge keeping artists poor is how our laws deal with royalties. You can be a part of a hit show that millions of people watch, that gets screened multiple times, that gets screened in multiple territories. You get a once-off fee. Remember when this happened? The South African TV industry has been rocked and Generations fans left shocked. 16 Generations cast members were fired after they went on strike demanding higher pay, royalties, and longer working contracts. I was shocked to find out, like, Generations is one of the biggest soapies in Jamaica. Your favorite Generations, right here on TVJ. In Jamaica, they're watching Generations from 20 years ago. Are those artists earning money? If we had a model of protecting creative contributions to intellectual property, we could be sitting in our houses right now, earning royalties for work that we've already done that has a life in other territories. Territories. The new Performance Protection Amendment Bill contains a statutory right for actors to receive a performer's royalty. So it could be a real game changer. But the President sent it back to Parliament with concerns. So for now, it looks like performers will be starring in the local adaptation of Waiting for Gardo. So what could be some solutions for the arts during these unprecedented times? To find out more, I chatted to the team who've been pushing the digital arts frontier since way before COVID. One of the projects that speaks to some exciting solutions that have come off the back of COVID-19 is an artist named Manele Koza, who has set up a 3D tour of his gallery. So really looking at how you can still make something available within a digital tool, as well as how you then and also make it sustainable. But going virtual isn't an option for everyone. Linda Vutela is an award-winning gospel artist. The online platform is not an ideal platform for her as her support base, which is largely in rural areas, is not online. And there are major barriers even to those who are in urban areas. The most immediate um, one that comes to mind is uh, around literacy and actually being able to understand how to engage or interact with digital tools as well as connectivity, the cost of data. Perhaps the more fundamental and longer lasting solution to Mzanzi's arts crisis actually lies with us, the audience. Maybe if we valued our own artists a little more, then so would the government? In South Africa, we've got high level, skilled, accomplished, prolific professionals who tour the world as professional artists and who are unknown at home. It's a problem that we don't have artists in residencies at schools. It's a problem that we don't have galleries and cultural centers in poor communities, in rural communities. We don't have the basics right. And now we've moved into this digital era. It makes the gap even even wider. The trouble that that having so much free content available to us uh, has brought is perhaps like I say a lack of respect for content creation. The extra step that we can take as consumers is putting our money where our mouth is, um, mm -hmm. and, and and starting to commit more to our, to our African South African artists and getting into the behaviour of paying for what we believe is good. 2020 has been a rough year, and it seems to keep getting worse for the arts. As Africans, it's time for us to reimagine how we interact with, consume, and support the work of those who help us imagine a better world. We know that with a pandemic-ravaged economy, the temptation for government will be to sacrifice the arts first. And we can't let that happen. The arts saved us during lockdown. Now it's our turn to step up and save the arts. Thanks for watching. 
Thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for the next episode. Remember to stay aware.